can't say my name. You know my name, Andreas Diaz. Today, me and, and my co-host Will are here today to do another Marvel Plus talk. And uh, this topic today, or this week, is one that um, I don't think may, many people will, will care, or will care if you like the Marvel Universe. Uh, this is a Fantastic Four 60th anniversary talk. Will, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Uh, doing good, as we talked before the recording. Uh, yeah. Very good news for me, and then very good news for you as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I guess from, like, to get the ball rolling, um, what was your first uh, exposure to the FF? Yeah, um, I guess it would be the movies that came out um, in the early 2000s when we were mm -hmm. kids. Um, although I also know them from, um, there's a, a local newspaper that used to include, um, the, like, early issues of The Amazing Spider-Man as inserts. Uh, oh. so there's that one issue with, um, like, Spider-Man breaking into the Baxter building. I think Doc Ock is involved. Um. So that was that was my first like introduction to them in a, a comic book form, um, but then the movies were my the first time I like saw them somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about you? So for my exposure to uh, the Fantastic Four, has to be in the cartoons um, mm. in the nineties, and 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 of course their um, crossover to Spider Man the the ninety show. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, those are like my early days of seeing the FF in form. And uh, yeah, around the mid 2000s, I seen the first two um, uh, live, live action uh, for tax enforcement by Fox. And uh, I, I saw both of them in fears. And, you know, um, I mean, it, they were adorable, fun popcorn movies, you know, nothing more, mm -hmm. nothing less. And so those are my uh, exposure to the FF. And I guess um, I, I will ask you, like, were they your favorite superhero team in, like, either the whole comic universe or in the Marvel universe? Like, like were they ever your favorite? Um, um, they've never been my favorite, but I, I, like, I have always liked them. Um, yeah. Same here. Yeah. yeah, same here. Same here. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I think, uh, like, it, it, it it's kind of interesting because I like the concept of them. I like the explorers idea. Like, mm -hmm. they remind me of like uh, you know, uh, Fantastic Forge, uh, that very classic sixty movie. Uh, no, no pun intended, folks. <laughs> you know, fantastic words. Um, and, you know, it reminds me a lot like Twilight Zone, especially mm -hmm. with the negative zone. Um, and uh, I, I just like the idea of family. Like, that's another thing I like about the FF. The, like, mm -hmm. they're like a, this, like, ragtag family. And, and, you know, each one represents you know, the different family members, you know, of course, uh, Reed Richards is the father, uh, Sue is the mother, and then, uh, the thing and, and Johnny Storm are kind of like, like, uh, like both brothers, but also uncles or like, you know, uh, nephew kind of vibes to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I think that's, it's really interesting. And like having this family wrap around into this sci-fi, you know, action uh, oriented storytelling that's like that's very unique at the time and I, I will say that that's maybe one of these that's very disappointing in all the live action films of uh, the, the three ones from Fox I feel like mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, I, I feel like that's something that I think has been kind of mis um, misrepresenting in their uh, medium of fortune. Uh, so that's, so to speak. Um, and I guess, um, you were going to say something? Just that I agree that, um, the, like, 
family dynamic and like the heart of what makes the Fantastic Four, the Fantastic Four has been missing from the Fox movies. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's been in um, Fan Four Stick. Yeah, I never saw Fan Four Stick. Because um, oh. <laughs> I just, I knew it was going to be bad and I didn't want to go through that. That's, that, um, that's what I did. <laughs> it was during my final year as a CSS camper. And mm -hmm. one of my friends asked if I wanted to go, and I was like, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be bad. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting talking, to, you know, towards the end of this podcast because um, I would say you, you, you save yourself from um, a lot of bad Yeah, things. no, I remember hearing things about it. So. Um, but I, when we talk about that, I, I would say it, it had potential to be a good film. But mm -hmm. it just got bucked out by just really awful studio, uh, and and also just wrong director. But whatever. Yeah. Um. I guess. Um. um I have a question. Who's your favorite character in the FF? Um. um I. Hmm. I feel like, like my gut reaction was to say Johnny Storm. Oh. Okay. Because he's like you know the fun cool one but now that i'm like pausing to think about it i think ben Grimm is the most interesting character yes i agree so i think i'm gonna go with the thing okay yeah. um cause, so he's your favorite as well yeah but i want to pick uh someone else um <laughs> i guess um i i do like um mr fantastic i mm. I always loved the powers of stretching, and yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and and I think uh, one of my early memories of the movies, um, I was, um, how you say, I always, I always dug his white um, stream in his hair. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. thought that was a cool thing, and it was that behind um, Robert Downey Jr.'s goatee that I always, I wanted to have when I was growing up, mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Oh my God! Uh, and the, just uh, the idea of Mister Fantastic being this hugely, like, uh, intelligent person, like very, like, like, uh, um, what was the word? Um, uh, uh, he he's kind of like uh, he's very sm like a high level, ten, like, intellectual person. You know, mm -hmm. like yeah. You know, uh, not like Tony Stark, where he's like very good at mechanics and, and, and technology. Uh, you know, Reed is just super smart, and, and right. that's very cool. I always liked that about him. Um, I guess uh, the fifth, uh, the you know, flip flop. That my least favorite character is always Susan Storm. Uh, I don't know if you have that opinion as well. Um, um yeah, I guess she's usually like reduced to some trope which is unfortunate i feel like she has the potential to be more interesting yeah i like it, it's weird like she has um i don't know, like um uh, um like it, it's kind of interesting because i know the four members of the ff like a visible woman is like the most powerful of them mm -hmm. and then I never like, and, and and but like at the same time, she's like the most tropey, and like the most stereotypical like character out of all of them, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like there should be more room. Um, and and I will get into this. Like my other problem is, you know, um, despite you know like live action has helped other characters. When you have a film franchise that hasn't been as successful as another, they don't give enough time or like or development of these characters from the comics that you want to see. Like, um, like a, a good example of that is Superman, um, um, and, and and particularly Lois Lane. I like her military background, and you you see this in the comics, the cartoons, and the TV show, and uh, Superman Lois. Uh, which is airing right now and they're going to have their last two episodes for the first season. Um, we see her, you know, military background with her father. And that's always something I like from 
that character and that's something we don't see in the live action films at all and like for Susan Storm I always like um and and Johnny Storm as well her brother um with their family background like you know their father and and I think there was one point in the comics he was like a villain and like he was mm. uh, stuck in some dimension like that was those are very interesting and I kind of wish we see more of that and help develop both of them uh, as like very multi-layered characters and that's something that's been kind of missing with uh with susan storm particularly and uh and yeah and it doesn't help like like what is it like every main villain likes her like uh nemo uh yeah likes you know is obsessed with her and then um dr doom as well like this, like, I, I, I mean, I don't know. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it, yeah. Um, and uh, I guess, um, uh, speaking of Dr. Doom, let's discuss, I think, um, probably the most important thing. You think that Fantastic Four has the best Rose Gallery in the Marvel Universe? <laughs> it's between them and Spider-Man, for sure. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, I love Spider-Man as well. But the uh, Fantastic Four, you got Doctor Doom, you got Galactus, you got Namor, you got the Scroll. Oh yeah. They got Scrolls. they got some really good ones. Annihilus. Oh. Love yeah. that character. Uh um, Mole Man. Um, mm-hmm. I forget about yeah. that. And uh uh well uh Rowan. I kinda forget about him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh yeah, really great. Uh, Rose Gallery for me. Uh, I mean, number one is always Spider Man. You're, you're always right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I will kind of disagree with you. I think uh, X Men has the best villains after Spider Man. They do have they do have good ones. Yeah, and and the third is Fantastic Four. I'll put that there because they have the yeah. best ones. And, uh, yeah, I mean, those are definitely the top three. Um, yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. They're they're definitely top tiers. Um, and uh, I, I guess. Um, I I uh, it's kind of interesting to look at the the Rose Gallery. It's like each of them like represent like the thing we know about Marvel. Like you got Mole Man, who isn't like like a Fantastic Four villain. He feels more like an X Men villain. Like he he feels like discriminated from the world. He's like a you know a freak. Like he reminds me a lot like the Batman Returns Penguin. <laughs> In, in, in that form and then you got the you know the more cosmic villains you know with galactus analysis and uh, uh now uh, uh scrolls and, and you know and Cree mm-hmm. and with rowan and uh and then you got the more um uh, superficial villains uh like you know dr doom but w- with a very unique twist of he bends technology with magic and then you got uh Nemo being this like Atlantean, you know, from this, you know, from you know, thousand leagues of the sea, and like that's very imaginative villains that face these characters. And then we got ones that are personal, like you know, um, uh, Sue's father, and um, then uh, uh, Papa Master, who is Alicia Master's father, and uh, he's another character I really like. And um, yeah, I, I think they're pretty good. Uh, who else that I really like? Uh, Amaliku Man, he's really great. Um, and then I like uh, Claw. He's another major mm-hmm. character. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he he's both here as a villain for Fantastic Four, but also you know Black Panther. Uh, and uh, yeah, very diverse villains that I like from the Fantastic Four. And uh, is Doctor Doom is your number favorite? As always with Fantastic Four and in, in, in general Marvel Universe, uh, he's he's definitely my favorite Fantastic Four villain. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say he's my favorite Marvel villain. But. Oh really? Okay, because yeah. I'm gonna say to you, um, when I started this channel, I did not include uh Doctor Doom in my top ten favorite villains list mm-hmm. because I I just haven't read too much of the FF comics mm. and. I mean, I like Doctor Doom, 
Um, and, and and just also, um, uh, to add also is like the out the live action films, and mm -hmm. and unfortunately he hasn't had the best adaptations at all as a villain. No. Oh no, my god. Oh my god, it's so bad. I ugh. and uh, yeah, and then uh, and of course we cannot forget uh, Kane, who's also a FM villain. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has finally popped up in the MCU, so um, hopefully he becomes a villain uh, for you know the FF MCU film because that'd be kind of cool to yeah, like. I, he probably will, actually. Mm. Okay, so you think he will play well? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I just have a feeling he's gonna pop up everywhere. Yeah, There's well, full versions of him. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! Uh, I. I know, like, oh my god, you think he'll be the Conqueror <laughs> that will be in FF, and then the one for Ant-Man 3 will be uh, maybe Raman Tot, or, um, oh my god. I, I think I said this either last week or the week before, but my current theory is that Kang the Conqueror is the one that's going to show up in all the movies, and then oh, they're going to have variants of Kang in the TV shows. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> that that would be actually kind of cool. If they they do that. That's pretty awesome. Um. And uh, well. And and another thing, I, I I would say um, you 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 don't like um, it kind of like transitions into other things. Another thing I like from the Fantastic Four that I should like them is they have you know costumes, but also they have video goals that are like like um like came to Batman like they had the fantastic car which I mm -hmm. love uh, uh, it's, it's one of the best and that's the thing I love about um, the sequel uh, they include that and that was actually a really good design mm -hmm. and um, I also love the the Baxter building um, yeah Baxter building is great oh my god one of the best uh, superhero headquarters um, and then uh, what else I like? Um, I like their costumes. I, I think they have um, probably the best, like, consistent costume, but one you can mm -hmm. change, and I, I, I really like that mm -hmm. about them. Um, what, I guess, like, um, from, like, the 60 years we have with them, um, what is your favorite costume for the, for the characters? Um, I'm kind of curious. Um, I don't know. If I have like a specific design, that's my favorite. I do like when they stick to the like simple original like blue tights with the the white around the four logo. Oh, okay. Um, to, I have like an image of a cover in my head, and I can't. Um, I'm trying to look it up. But yeah. um, in the meantime, what's your favorite um, version uh, of the costume? Uh, my favorite is the black costumes they okay. have in the cartoons. Uh, that was always my favorite from them. And uh, it just, I like how they're like kind of like the Green Lantern costumes, but like it's black and white. And like mm -hmm. you see kind of the blue halings. So. Uh, and then I also like the the two live action um costumes, you know, with uh, Chris Evans and um, uh and uh, Michael Chiklis because I like their costume there because I like how they blend the you know the black and blues, and it's it's a very efficient costumes. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess the other ones that I like I do like um. Uh, was it the uh, Jonathan Hickman costumes they display? Um, and then I guess, and then like, so like the the second season of the 90s costumes I like the most. Uh, another one is the Future Foundation costumes. I like those. Um, uh, I like the whites and, and black. Uh, and of course, especially with Spider Man, I like his costume for the Future Foundation. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then 
I, I guess like least favorite is the red ones they were before. Um, uh, just never liked their red costumes they had. Should be blue. Yeah, it, it should yeah. be always blue. I, I just feel like it, it just makes more sense to that. And, uh, yeah, and then I guess, uh, I'm getting to, uh, supporting characters because that's also another thing I, I'm kind of curious. I like their uh, supporting characters, particularly with Alicia Masters. Um, I like the Inhumans. I, I really like yeah. that. Oh, I like the Inhumans a lot. Yes, oh. I, I like, um, I like Crystal. Uh, she, mm. She's my favorite human, human. and uh, uh, and then of course we like um, Black Panther. He came from in this uh, universe, and I guess kind of getting into this, um, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, just you know the current state of these uh, of these characters. Um, I was kind of surprised to see how much that we know from Marvel Universe comes from from the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. Like you know, this is how Black Panther. Um, came into the universe is by first appearing to the FF comics. Uh, same mm -hmm. thing with the Inhumans, and uh, and then you kind of get the uh, crossovers with the multiple characters from the universe, which is also cool. Um, like it, it, it's 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 kind of like like you know it, weird, but also like you know like um so informative how much the FF was so important to the Marvel universe. And it's kind of sad they're not like, I mean, they're back for the comics, but like, it's kind of sad they're not like as important as they were before. I, mm -hmm. I, I just felt like, um, you know, company corporation just kind of ruled it, the FF. So, uh, I don't know if you have that opinion. So, yeah, sorry. I, um, it's been a while since they've been like used well. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm hoping with the new movie coming out in a few years, um, they'll like reintroduce them and reinvent them in some way that you know, yeah makes them cool again. That's that's true. Um, I agree. Um, I guess um, to kind of like wrap things up. And I, I guess let's kind of get into the medium and like, what's your favorite inter, uh, inter, yeah, interpretation of the FF? Ugh. Um, I guess you mean like outside of comics? Yeah, like cartoons or <laughs> even yeah. the live action films. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really seen. A lot of the cartoons that they appear in. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, I, I, I think outside of comics, I've only really seen them in um, those live action movies with Chris Evans and Jessica Alba. So, oh. it's like by default, it's those. Still <laughs> by default. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, um, <laughs> I I I I cannot. I, I I mean, and I mean to be fair though, I mean, it, it's always like that with every character you're not a fan of, you know, and mm -hmm. so I you have to be fair for that. Um, um, yeah, I I, I agree. Um, the Chris Ever ones is um definitely like on like on point with the characterization of the characters. Yeah. Um, I, I think the thing and the human torch from uh from the first two live action ones are the best. Mm -hmm. And then where I, I feel like the weakest is always um uh Jessica Alba and uh Iron uh Golfin who play Mr. Vitassin. Um those are the characters that are kinda like the hardest to depict and like they're right. like the weakest for me in terms of yeah. the live action films. I agree with that. Um I mean Chris Evans was just like a great casting choice for the Human Torch, especially like at that stage in his career. And he was used to playing like cocky jerks. Um, yes. Yes. And then um, 
uh, Michael Chiklis for Ben is also great. And like I really liked the practical effects they used for the thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, impressive. I mean, I um, I mean at the time, uh, and I know you haven't seen um, the Ben Forstick, but um, the CGI there was pretty good. Okay. Um, yeah, I've seen. It just he looks too rocky, from what I've seen. Like, and like I know obviously he's supposed to be made of rocks, but he looks like too made of rocks. You know, he looks like cord more than <laughs> the thing. Um, that's true. Um, yeah, I, um, it, um, I. I, I think they were on point with the design. I just feel like they didn't, like, if like if you look at the comics, the thing is so big. Like, he's mm -hmm. kind of like Hulk size. Right. And I feel like they didn't do that for that version. And um, and I like his voice. They actually, um, um, like, did kind of the Batman, get, uh, the Dark Knight kind of thing with Jimmy Bell's voice. Like, they, uh, enhance it and make it like a deep voice when he's okay. like in the theme form that was pretty cool um um uh, uh, i seen some of the constant art for the fan force stick and some of them were very interesting and like very cool um but uh i, I think it's kind of, it's always going to be difficult with like a cgi character like how like how big you want this character to be and stuff like that you know um yeah and uh um, I will say, like, um, to kind of pick it back uh, in interpretation, I like uh, the cartoon one from the 90s were very great. Like, they were spot on with those characters. Okay. And um, uh, I think um, they're, they're in the Disney Plus. I highly recommend watching that show. It's so fun. Yeah. Oh, um, my God. Let's check it out. Yes. And you have to check out season two because okay. um, – Especially with the Hulk versus the Thing, mm -hmm. oh my God! I remember that it's such a great episode, and like <laughs> Doom is in it, and it, it, it this and I want like I, I'll just give you like the ending, like there's like they play up something with the Thing, mm -hmm. and it's so melodrama, and it's so funny, it is so, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! And and, and that episode is great because you see like cameos from every Marvel character. You see the X-Men and Spider-Man and it's it's great. It's it's oh that show is amazing. Um uh you got She Hawk coming in as well and she's great. Um uh another interpretation I like is that there was another second um solo show called Fantastic Four World's Greatest Heroes. Uh that's another one that's good. It's kinda like a, a moving tie in. Like they like it's a comic book universe. FF but mixed with the live action that was going on. Yeah. Um, that's really good too. Um uh and I, I guess um I guess we can kinda get into um the thing um I guess the thing I I'm like really surprised but also puzzling. Why do you think the FF never works in the films? Um, I don't know, it might be just that, like, the studio behind it hasn't really, like, understood what makes them click, you know? Mm. Like, I, I think the ones from the early 2000s were the closest, um... Uh, there's like you got to balance the family dynamics with the weird sci-fi stuff with all the like interpersonal drama like you really got to focus on the the character moments um and those movies didn't really do that even though they like seemed to really understand Johnny and Ben yeah um, um. and i i can't speak to Fan four stick, but it doesn't seem like it did that either. Yeah, um, 
um, speaking of Johnny, he's like the best thing about that film. Like, yeah, I've heard that Michael B. Jordan was really good as Johnny Storm. Yeah, um, he, he and was I, I thought Kate Mara sounded like a good casting choice for Sue as well. Oh my God, I, I, I will say this. Um, you mentioned we mentioned early in this podcast about Dump Soul and the stress or just being there. You know, like, mm. like being a female character. That's what that character oh. is in Fem Force. Like she's just okay. there, and. And, and and I'm going to spoil this because you're not going I'm to not see gonna, this. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. uh, um, you, you can't believe it. Like all four of them, like in the comics, they always go up together and get their powers together, right? Right. In this film, they they you know they did the ultimate um, uh, storyline. You know, instead of getting in the cosmic rays, they do it in ultra yeah. the negative zone. Or... Y- yeah. Well, and it was weird. They don't even call it the negative zone. They just call it um, Planet Zero or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. it, uh, it, it, it was really awful. Like, they didn't use that. Um, everything that. about that movie sounds like it's a comic book movie that's ashamed of being a comic book movie. Yes. It's never a good sign. <laughs> no, it was never a good sign. And the thing is, it becomes a superhero genetic film towards, like, the third act. Right. And just... Oh my god, it was really bad. Um, it, it's crazy. Um, like Sue doesn't go with them when they go to Planet Zero, and like she get her powers by some weird light that comes out when they come back. It, cause she, it, it, it was so bad, and like she doesn't use her invisible powers; she uses her force fields. And Wait, I, she she doesn't turn invisible in the movie. Um, it, she, you know how like lights flicker on and off, you know? Yeah. Okay, apply that to Susan with her invisible powers. That's how they do it. And she, she just like flicks in and out of being visible, or yeah, it, it, it's kind of weird because because in that film they're trying to do the body horror, right? And like, um, she she does turn invisible with the suit she gets to control her powers. But most of the time, we don't use her visible powers as often. So, um, yeah, very weird. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, my my thing with, uh, like, Fem Force, like, it, it felt very pitiful and just, they, they just, uh, like, Fox did it because they wanted to keep the rights. That was, like, the main purpose yeah. of Fem Force, like. Yeah. And where the other two were, <laughs> yeah, and... and Perfect corporate greedy, like story. But like every time you hear this, it's just ugh. <laughs> uh, it's really bad. And um, and uh, I, my 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 thing is if like they don't like um. I was watching on um, the thing about um, one YouTuber uh, Patrick H Williams mentioned this. Like for me. They never they, these movies never be ambitious enough with their sci-fi, and yeah, and that's something I don't like about these films is that they don't take the sci-fi to as far as capacity at all. Yeah, and, and I, mm. I I just ugh. yeah I agree. I think the the ones from the early two thousands didn't do that because superhero movies was still like a very specific genre instead of being what it is now where it's like a setting for different subgenres. Yes. That's um, great. The new one though <laughs> should have been that. Yeah. Um, I I thought so. I I don't know, you seen the teaser trailer? It, I thought yeah, they were going to do that. I did see it and that's why I decided not to see the movie. <laughs> we- <laughs> but yeah. Really? Oh my it god. It look good. I like. I don't like the body horror for the Fantastic Four. I I think um, the Fantastic Four should be hard sci-fi film. Yeah, like, it should be like like a B movie from the '60s, but like mm. played straight and as a superhero thing. I uh, that's very interesting. Uh, <laughs> I um I mean. I, I think you could do that. Um, a very meta commentary. Um, you can also do like a very um, uh, what is it like two thousand one, or you know, uh, 
The Incredibles kind of level where it's yeah. very thoughtful. And uh, and by the way, it's kind of weird that the Incredibles from Pixar are, are the best versions. Basically, of, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and and they actually got a successful sequel, and I I just I cannot believe in this day and age for me that the make the makeup ones are, are, are the best. Oh my god, oh my god, that's so painful for me to see that. Um, yeah. Um, another thing, um, like that also hurts them is the uh, characterization of the characters, like. I feel like they're the most, like, tropey, very stereotypical characterization of characters in film. And I feel like that's something that's it's damning these characters to be successful, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, it's, it's fine with certain characters, like uh, Team and N Team, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. like, like, that works for them because, it, because they're kids and, like, I you can understand what they are, you know, they got Leo being the series one, you know, Ralph being the series one, and then, you know, uh, Dan Tunnel being the smart one, like it works with them, right? Mm -hmm. Here, I feel like it doesn't work with the FF. Like, like, um, I mean, I hope the MCU can, like, like, dissolve some of these bad tropes and castration with these characters and put so many new ones that we haven't seen yet for them. Um, um, I guess, um, I guess I can, um, like, officially wrap up things. Um, I guess we know we're getting a, um, SCU film, you know, soon. Um, and I guess, uh, the quick question, are you excited for John Watts being the director of the Fantastic Four, because I like. What's your opinion on that? I mean, um, I really like his Spider-Man movies, um, and I think that like tone and visual style would work really well with the Fantastic Four. Okay. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Okay. It sounds like you disagree. I I kind of wish they have. I kind of wish they found a different director that was more exciting. I I mean I wasn't expecting that choice. I, I was kind of like, oh okay. I mean yeah. I I do enjoy the Tom Holland films, but they're not my like. Um, I mean Spider-Man: Homecoming will be top on my Spider-Man list, but like, I I I don't think they're like my Spider-Man films, you know. Yeah. Uh, despite some of the good stuff they have. Um. Uh, but I I think he 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 definitely knows how to do characters foremost, um, which is something I like from the Spider-Man films. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, and I think he handles the actors good, so that gives me confidence. Yeah. Um, uh, and I also, guess... Oh, oh, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I know Kevin Feige really likes the Fantastic Four, so I have a feeling that's mm. going to be his new, like, pet project that he monitors more closely. Um, which means that's, it'll probably be good. That's true. Oh, that's true. Um, same thing with X Men. Um, I mean, yeah. that that'll be close as well. Um, yeah, I hope so. Um, and um, I guess, um, I mean, um, villains. I I guess, uh, like, I don't want Doctor Doom at all in the first film. Save no. that for the sequel. Okay. And um, um, I like that Kane is in this. Um, uh, universe now. Mm -hmm. I hope he will be the main villain. That makes sense. And um, and I guess the question is: Do you think um, instead of Kane being the main villain, do you think there's someone else they're going to use him um, and use as a villain for the first film? Um, maybe. I hope they do something like cosmic. I hope they do like yeah, a nihilist or something. Um. Yeah. I have. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, I I guess I got two. Um, the one you say, Analysis, I think that'll be second choice, and then number one could be Monaco Man. I feel like because okay. um it, it feels like we're heading towards the sequel wars, and I I feel like Monaco Man be the first makes sense if you're saying that sequel wars event for the MCU. 
um, uh, the the one that is in twenty fifteen, not the the old classic one. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I thought that'd be good, and if not, then I think Kane will be the obvious choice because, like, he's the well-known one. So people have her now. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess uh, to kind of uh, uh, any thoughts you want to say, well, uh, that you haven't talked yet, uh, you want to bring up right now. Um, I guess I just wanted to like emphasize the importance of the Fantastic Four to like the history of Marvel Comics. Mm, yes. Um, they were like, I guess Marvel was like really struggling around the time that um, the Fantastic Four came out. I think, um, and I might be misremembering this, but I, I think Stanley was like kind of getting ready to leave Mm. Uh, and his wife was like, well, why don't you write something that's like... That you want. That you want, that's like yeah. different, and you don't have to think about what will sell. It's just whatever you want to do. And he took that and internalized it and thought, like, I want superheroes, but they are like real, like, fleshed out characters that bicker and have flaws and they feel more like a, a family than just like a, a group of perfect humans. Um, yeah. And yeah. then it, he like wrote that with Jack Kirby and then it sold really well. It kind of saved the company uh, and kind of changed how superheroes are written because they created that like family dynamic and really fleshed out um, characters in a genre where the characters tended to be pretty like one or two dimensional yeah i agree um yeah and, and i think it's important to emphasize like they're the ones they brought the actual like realistic and like like um grit to like um of what was going on and i feel like that's something that dc always wants to copy and uh yeah, and, and it helped to bring in like very relatable characters um, to the comics, and like, and, and it also pushed you know uh, story uh, story uh, methods that we haven't seen in comics, like uh, long term story arcs, you know, um, like the Galactus trilogy. That was something that was very important. Um, you know, setting up something that you don't know what's going to happen next, like the Inhumans. Like they set up very early on. Like, uh, like Medusa was in uh, the Fatal Four, and and we didn't know who was that character until we get more into the character's background in the comics, and like that's something um, they don't uh, we don't see as often. And then um, also it's like expanding the universe. That's another thing. Like um, I mentioned Black Panther. Like mm -hmm. you know, FF was so important to Marvel because they were like the top tier books and like if they wanted to introduce a new idea or like character that was the book you do it and like and they will spawn off because you know they were in this one book that was successful you know you know so that's how you know black panther was successful that's how um inhumans was successful mm -hmm. um and then I'm, I'm trying to think what else other characters um and then if you know there was you know, example of, of characters that they didn't have their solo books that they got canceled. They go either to the Avengers or FF, and Hulk was that example. Like Hulk uh, in the '60s was like his book didn't last long. He went into the FF at one time, and then he you know became a member of the Avengers. So uh, that's the thing. And like major writers came from FF as well. Um, that are also well known and, and, and important comic, uh, the comic book industry. Like uh, John Byrne came, I, I think he came uh, before he did the um, Superman Man of Steel Rubble in the 80s. He mm -hmm. did first Fantastic Four, and like that was successful. Um, Peter David um, did the Fantastic Four before he did like Aquaman and uh, you know, the Hulk series that's well known. Mm -hmm. 
So um, very important. Um, uh, now comic and, and and it's just kind of sad that you know when they stopped producing the books in 2015 right and it, it, it left a whole of like the Marvel Universe that I like and like it, it didn't look the same after they were not in the books I mean they were in teams but like just not having the FF book around just didn't make sense mm-hmm you know, um, I'm happy he's back, but like it's it doesn't. It, everything now is like everyone knows every character in Marvel universe, you know. So and, you know, Guardians is like the main, you know, cosmic team, and, and FF was that. Mm-hmm. It's just weird. Yeah. 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 Um, it's good you mentioned that, well, because yeah, because Marvel is like it. They you know you hear the term uh, for like Freddy Krueger how. Uh, like uh, this is the house that Freddy was built for a new life seminar. That's how, that's how you applied that to FF to Marvel. Yeah. Um, anything else we need to cover? Um, that's all you had to say. Well. Yeah, I think that's it for me. Oh, all right. Uh, this. Um, this uh, it's, uh, same as well for me as well. I'm pretty much good to go um thank you everyone to listen to this podcast uh me will will have a little break uh for next week um but no worry i'll hopefully get a guest um to help me do another podcast and topic uh no worry me and will will be back for um two weeks right like in two weeks Mm -hmm. to do another podcast um i think um no no uh what if it's coming in august 11th so we'll have one more like on topic marvel thing and then we'll uh, start again for the TV Weekly series mm-hmm. with What If, which is exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh my God, it's crazy. Uh, thank you, Will, for coming uh, today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yep, uh, it was a fun talk. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a nice day and hit the subscribe button and see you guys soon. <laughs>